Welcome back to another custom 3D printed case build. This is really one of my favorite builds so far. It's got this super cool looking ventilated pattern on its 210 by 210 millimeter cube shape, which also means it will fit the print volume of the under 3 or similar printers. This case can hold an ITX size graphics card, two 2.5 inch drives, as well as having a front to back airflow. The external cover itself took roughly 550 grams of filament to print while the entire case used a total of 1.2 kilos, or about 2.5 pounds. The external cover itself is definitely the part that took the longest to print, and for me this took roughly 22 hours due to all the tiny details with a 0.6 nozzle and a layer height of 0.3 millimeters. But this can definitely be cut down a bit with some different settings. Even though all parts fit the Ender 3, I personally added some ears to the corners because I printed this on my CR10 which has a bigger print surface and I added those ears to prevent the corners from lifting off the build plate, which can often happen on some of these huge prints. Anyways, the internal chassis of the case mainly consists of flat pieces that are super easy to print and they all take between 1 and 3 hours each to print depending on your speed settings. All parts of the chassis itself can be attached using M3 by 10mm machine screws. Now let's look at how easy this case is to assemble. The first step is to actually install the motherboard standoffs which will tap themselves into the holes in the mounting plate. The mounting plate is then attached to the front of the case using M3 screws. This method works very well as long as the screws are never over tightened. The second panel holds the power supply and is easily attached the same way as the other panel in the orientation shown here. We can now attach the bottom plate and we're ready to start adding some hardware. The ITX motherboard easily attaches to the pre-installed standoffs followed by the graphics card, which here is a 170mm long 1660 Super, so again, it's super easy to assemble. Before things get tight, it's a good idea to add some of the cable before I grab my fan box containing, you guessed it, a bunch of fans. And for this build I'll be using these super sweet looking Noctua Chromax 92 by 14 mm fans. These are absolutely beautiful in their all black design, super quiet and they can even be customized with these colored anti-vibration pads. These are very slim at only 14 mm in thickness and this is also probably the only fan size you can actually fit in this case. The standard 25mm fans are actually too thick, so just keep that in mind if you want to build in this case. Now it's starting to look like something, but we're still missing some important parts, like the storage. This bracket can actually hold up to two 2.5 inch hard drives and attaches to the front plate with three M3 screws. The power supply has this bracket that mounts it vertically with its exhaust facing upwards. You may ask, why don't you just rotate it 90 degrees and have the exhaust out the back? Well, then there wouldn't be enough room for the exhaust fan, that's why. After some simple cable management and some zip ties, it's time to install the rear panel, using the same M3 screws again. We can simply screw this into the two side panels just like the front panel. Now we just need to do some finishing touches and our internal chassis is complete and we should now have a fully functional PC except we need a power button. This case has a 12mm hole in the top vent to mount the power button. And with that we're going to test if everything works and as expected, she fires right up. I absolutely love the look of these all black Noctua fans and they really improved the overall look of this build. Even the CPU cooler uses that exact same fan. Here comes the moment I'm assuming you're all waiting for if you're still watching at this point, the external cover. The external cover slides right on in a super satisfying way right into place and is secured with four of the same M3 screws as before. Oh, and we must not forget to also add another of those M3 screws to secure the graphics card in place to the rear panel. And with that last screw in place, this masterpiece is finished. 
As mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is really one of my favorite builds so far and it's so easy to make, yet so elegant to look at, its size is so small, yet so easy to turn on, all black and just a pleasure to use all day long, which leads me to my next topic, performance. With a Gigabyte 1660 Super ITX graphics card, we're getting an average temperature of around 73 degrees and between 60 to 70 FPS during 1440p gaming. For the CPU, running a stress test, we're looking at roughly the same average temperature of about 73 degrees, with occasional peaks up to 80 at some very few points, usually at the beginning of the test before the fans catch up. Overall, I really love how this case turned out. The temperatures are within acceptable ranges, and I've used it for a few weeks now and I'm super happy with its performance. I'm personally keeping the fan curves at silent, and it's almost completely silent during non-demanding tasks thanks to the Noctua fans. During demanding tasks on the other hand, the fans will ramp up, but I'd normally be using a headset during those heavy tasks anyway, so I don't really notice it too much. Did you like this build and want to give it a shot? All files will be available to download for free through the Thingiverse link in the video description along with links to all other parts required. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my upcoming projects. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you again in my next one.